three stage wins this morning. You're leading the rally by a reasonable amount from the guy who's trying to win the championship. What's the family saying? Well, what's your strategy? How are you feeling right now? Just I'm I'm very comfortable doing the pace I'm doing at the moment. Um, like just hitting apexes, getting good traction, and yeah, I'm surprised we're out in front. Yeah. You had to change fuel yesterday and computers. There was a bit of risk involved. How has the car gone? Has it changed the drivability or is it pretty much the same? It scared the crap out of me, to be honest with you. Coming out of the park for May this morning, the thing wouldn't, it was like revving at 3,500 revs. It won't pull it in reverse and it won't go into neutral unless it's below two. So I had to actually turn the engine off to get it into reverse to back it out of the park for May. But once we come back here, turned it off, restarted again, it was fine. So I think it was probably a throttle position thing that hadn't seen a full range of motion or something. So the car, I'd like to say it goes better. Tim Batten, co-driver for Adrian Coppin, and uh, they had a reasonable day, but the boys are busy there at the moment, probably lucky to get into service, so stick through the radiator, which can obviously end worse. Oh look, absolutely, we uh, made away like a bandit there with that one, we uh, noticed we had to stick through the radiator and we pulled up and I pulled it out. Um, luckily for us, it didn't actually start leaking coolant, so Ooh. I was a bit concerned, had a few times there, but I uh, kept checking the temp gauge on the dash, and we're quite lucky with our cars, because they start flashing red when the things get hot. Uh, and they start shutting the computer systems down, lots of stuff, but uh, nothing started flashing, so we just kept pressing on. Five or six k into Tarago, the engine temps were reading like 140 degrees, and it was all wasn't good. Yeah. So uh, we kept an eye on it, we pulled it back a bit, and then it wasn't improving, but it was jumping from like 90 to 140, 130. It was really strange, and every time it got really high, the car would misfire, carry on, and it's compensating so it doesn't blow itself yeah. up. So. I said to Glenn, mate, jump out. So we pulled over. He jumped out, <laughs> popped the bonnet up, had a look, said, check if there's water in the radiator, and he confirmed that. Put our belts back on and coasted the end of the stage and just reported to the boys. And we suspect it's a faulty engine temp sensor, just giving some wrong readings to the computer and it's killing the car. So better be safe than sorry. A local here having some fun out in the bush. Ramo, uh, you're putting on for the crowd as well, mate. We've had some cameras out there and uh, you said we wouldn't be competitive. You've been definitely spectacular. Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, we're home in Warrigal and all I can think about is in this car doing as big a skids as possible. Probably about 100 grand short of having a super competitive car. So uh, just pull more revs than anyone else and bigger skids. And um, look, we're, sometimes we're a bit competitive here and there, but having some car dramas. But as long as the spectator points, it's, uh, I can grab another gear, it'll be fine. Do you think the second passes will be easier or harder from a driver's point of view? Hopefully easier. This next stage was quite rocky this morning. But it's uh, grouped together at 36 kilometres. The tyres are only lasting 30, so you've got to be pretty smart with that. Um, then the next two stages, the tyres got through fine. So I'd like to probably go on a 900. They're a bigger block, but we've just got the 800s now. Um, they're still a hard, so that's a bonus, and we'll just keep going and see what happens. We're eighth at the moment. We need to try and get up the field a bit, but we'll keep pushing on.